Let me hit that. Now, let me record that first part of this. Okay, that's okay. I don't mind doing that. As a matter of fact, I, I think I have a couple of other recordings I can post to. Um, oh man. But we still seem to be a little sluggish here. Try this again. I got some action that time. Here we go. And I want to find something that's got a little bit better association. It's going to open multiple times now. In the meantime, I'll open a couple of these. says it's not exactly cooperating with me tonight. Where is it? That, that'll open it up. I'm going to try opening it from SPSS. Maybe that'll help. Ah, nope, that's the other file. Open data. Bingo. Okay, finally. All right, so let's take a look at this. this is all numerical data that we have here. And for a number of different states, it's looking at the rate of violent crime. Okay, that might be murders per 100,000 people, a murder rate. Uh, um, this might be in a number of uh, violent crimes, a murder rate per, say, 10,000, 100,000 people, the poverty rate, the uh, rate of completion of high school rate of uh, 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 people taking some college, uh, the percentage of single parent, parent homes, uh, the unemployment rate, and um, I'm not sure what this metropolitan variable uh, stands for, but it, I think it describes um, the density of the population on a scale of zero to 100 with the most densely populated probably is uh, 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 100 and least densely populated uh, might be zero or something like that. And these are the ratings for these, for these uh, uh, based on uh, 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 the type of community that it is. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So let's say we're interested in whether or not there's an association between poverty and the murder rate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to first start with a correlation. But before we do that, to see if there is indeed an association between the two of them, I'm going to do a uh, graph. So you guys should be able to open that hopefully easier than I did on, uh, on uh, uh, your computers. So I'm gonna to go to a simple scatter dot, let's say define, and now I'm gonna tell it, well, I'm interested in the association between the murder rate, 
move that into the y-axis, and the poverty rate in that community or that state. Okay, I'm going to click OK, and we're going to look at, get our first look at the data. You guys can do this at the same time. You probably have your, your results probably already up. There we go. Okay, so what do you think? Is there an association between the two? I got a little bit of a problem there, don't I? Right? And what's the problem that I have there? There's an outlier, right? There's an outlier where the murder rate is multi many times, like four or five times where the murder rate is in all the other places. And what it's doing, it's having the effect of compressing the scale the vertical scale, so it's harder for me to see if there's an association. So I may want to remove that outlier. So I'm going to go back to my data, and I'm going to look to see who that who that high murder rate is. And there's that high murder rate right there. What is that? That's the District of Columbia. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to I'm going to edit that out. I'm going to tell it to delete that. Okay, I'm going to clear. Okay, and it's not gone now. So now I'm going to repeat my analysis. Analyze. Uh, uh, correlate by variate. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I want to do my. I want to do my graph first. Uh, legacy dialogues. Uh, uh, scatter plot. Okay. Simple scatter plot. Define. Uh, the, the, uh, we've already defined it, so that uh, stayed in there from the last time we did it. I'll click OK. Let's take a look at what it looks like this time. Mm -hmm. I want to hit it again. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here's what it looks like this time. That's a little clearer now, isn't it? Does it look like there's a correlation there? Right? As the poverty level goes up, do we tend to see these numbers go up with poverty level? It does look like there's a correlation, right? Doesn't look like there's that strong a correlation, but it does look like that. Let's actually analyze to see if that correlation is significant. So what's our null hypothesis here? Our null hypothesis is that there's no association between the poverty rate in these states and the murder rate in those states. Okay, our alternative hypothesis is that there is an association. We're gonna test that by actually calculating the Pearson's correlation. So I'm gonna go into analyze. Um, 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 let's see. You know what it is? I don't see it on my drop menu because I'm in the out. Oh, uh, uh, output page. Okay, correlate by variant. Okay, I'm going to move now. I'm going to move uh, murder rate and poverty in here, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. So what we're looking for is an R value that's greater or less than zero, depending on if it's a negative or positive correlation, and a uh, significance that would allow me to reject that null hypothesis. Okay, let's see if I got what I needed. Okay, what's our, coral, what's our Pearson's uh, uh, correlation? 0.427. It's not terrible, right? Uh, 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 could be better, but it's not terrible. And what's our significance? It's 0 0.002. Okay, so we can reject the null hypothesis that there's no association. And it does appear that there's a moderate association between the poverty level in the state and the number of murders. Now, does that mean that's causal? Well, that's the $64,000 question, right? We don't know that uh, for sure. And is that the only factor that's involved here? And how important a factor is this? So let's for the moment say that it, it stands to reason that there is an association between the poverty rate and uh, uh, the murder rate, maybe for a number of reasons. Uh, poverty affects families. Poverty affects uh, job prospects, uh, so on and so forth. seems reasonable that we might uh, think that there's some actual association. Okay, so now that's now is where we go into regression. Okay, in regression, we want to we want to number one predict uh, what the which one of these is a uh, uh, causal factor and which one is a response factor. So in our case, most likely the poverty level is the causal factor and the actual response factor is the murder rate. Okay, so let's go into do a, a linear regression. I'm going to analyze regression and uh, but, 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 uh, let's see, regression. I, I'm going to have to go back. I have to, yeah, I have to go back to the uh, analyze. 
regression. Okay, and I'm going to go into linear regression. Okay, and this time notice that there's two boxes here for a dependent and an independent variable. So the causal variable is the now it's coming up 12 times. That's from about 20 minutes ago when I first clicked it, right? Okay, so the causal variable we think is the which is the independent variable is the poverty rate. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. And the outcome variable, which is then the dependent variable, it depends on the poverty rate, is going to be the murder rate. I'm going to put that up there. Okay, and I'm going to ask it to go ahead and actually calculate that for me. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to ignore the options for the moment. Okay, give it a moment. Okay, and here's our output. These, uh, this output should look at, uh, somewhat familiar from what we've seen before. First of all, the R value. Okay, it recalculated the Pearson's correlation, right, which was 0.427. That's exactly what we got before. So now it also calculated a value called R squared, which is literally just the R value squared. You guys remember what that predicted, that R value, that R squared value? That R squared value estimates the amount of the variability and the murder rate that could be attributed to changes in the poverty rate. So 18% of the variability in the uh, murder rate is attributable to the poverty rate. So now 80% is coming from somewhere else, right? So that's not great, but you know, but it's certainly interesting that 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 almost 20% of the murder rate can be attributed to higher or lower rates of poverty. Okay, so now if we look in here and we look at our uh, um, uh, our test to make sure that this that these slopes are really different, right? We have a significance of 0.02, so we believe our association or correlation. We can reject on our hypothesis that there's no association. But if we go down to this last box, this last box gives us some interesting information. Uh, first, it gives us a, a, a significance level for the constant and for the poverty rate. For the slope, the poverty rate, uh, it seems like there's a pretty good correlation. For the constant, for the constant, well, it doesn't look like we're very certain that that constant is really uh, uh, a reliable value. But we're going to go ahead with our analysis anyway, because we're more interested in the slope anyway. Okay, so we're going to look at how we're going to use these values here, the constant value and the, and the, uh, 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 the coefficient value, this B coefficient value that we want for poverty. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my chart, my, my graph here, my graph paper. Okay, let me close all of this stuff up. Get rid of the 19 times that this opened. Okay, let's see, notebook. Here we are. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this. Okay, so now, if I had plotted this, I have an echo here. I think one of the speakers is on, and maybe other phones. Um, if I had plotted this, let me just make sure everybody's muted online. Mm -hmm. I do have a question there too. I want to answer. And these, and I'm going to sure I'm going to be talking here. Okay. And the question on sh on the uh, 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 on black on uh, uh, among the people that are at home now. What happens when you remove the outlier in terms of reporting the data? Well, we have to be a little bit careful about just ditch ditching outliers, right? We might want to you know figure out why. The District of Columbia was so different. I mean, was there, uh, for instance, if you look at New York vital statistics in 2001, the murder rate uh, was enormous in 2001, right? But, uh, but as far as like data from year to year, most people would analyze that as an outlier because what happened in 2001? 9-11, right? 3,000 people that, you know, that the murder rate in New York basically doubled that year. 
right? And, but that was an outlier. That was, there was a reason why that data was different than what we would have expected it to be. There's a chance that we may find something if we look at the data for the District of Columbia, maybe there was, uh, you know, uh, uh, gang wars going on. Maybe there was uh, uh, some some sort of uh, 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 terrorist attack or something like that. Uh, maybe there's something that we could use to explain why that data was so different to justify using it as an outlier. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at data as we might see it presented here. Okay, so here is here's some data, positive correlation, right? I'm just going to call this X and Y, right? As it happens in one of the analyses we just did, one of these was age and the other one was uh, blood sugar, okay? So now um, I, drew, I drew a line that approximated these values, right? So the interesting thing about this line is, is that is that, that line demonstrates mathematically, graphically, the relationship between this variable and that variable. Okay, but and we're doing it as a straight line. We're assuming that this relationship is variable, is uh, is uh, 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 linear. Okay, so what's the nature of straight lines? Well, you guys remember when you when you, when you went to school? Uh, I, when I learned it, it was called the y is equal to m x plus b, right? You guys remember what m was? It was a slope, right? So in other words, we could predict if we could draw that line, the slope would be the change in the y over the change in the x value. Okay, and what was B? B was the y in, it was the y intercept. And where does the y intercept take place? Where x is equal to zero. Right? So now that number doesn't have to make any sense to us, right? It's just the place where it crosses the y, the y-axis, right? Where x is zero and it crosses the y-axis. Because an age of zero doesn't make any sense, right? But in a lot of cases, that'll happen with this kind of data. But what this tells us is is that if we know what the slope is and we know what the y-intercept is, we can draw that line. We know that line. So those are the two pieces of information that I need, slope and y-intercept, or any point. That, if, I, if, I draw, if I draw a point there, if I know the slope of the line that goes through that, I know where that line goes, everywhere that line goes. In this case, we know where the y-intercept is. If we know the slope, we know everywhere that line. I can extend that and everywhere that line goes, I know where it, I know where it goes. That line, that formula, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in statistics, we call that y is equal to alpha plus beta x. And the beta is the slope in this case. And alpha is the y-intercept. So now, if I go back to the output that I have from SPSS for the uh, uh, violent crime, let me find it there, okay? My slope, my slope was 0.365, and my constant was point, my, my y-intercept was 0.432. So if I plug that into that formula, let's see if I can't do this. Uh, so the line that would represent this relationship, uh, where it would be, I'm going to change this now to poverty. Rate of poverty, and I'm going to change this to murder rate. Okay, that line y is equal to this the y-intercept, which is 0.432 plus the slope 0.365 times x. Okay, I can actually substitute for that what those values really are, y values, y and x values are really are, and that is that the uh, murder rate, y, is equal to 0.432 plus 0.365 times the poverty rate, the percentage poverty rate. Okay, so let's actually, let's actually apply that now. So if I go to, if I go to uh, uh, SPSS, and I say to myself, let's take a look at these values in the, in the uh, uh, data window. Okay, look at these values in my data window. And I see, I'm no, look, just looking at these two, probably. And if I look at these in, in my data window, gee, I can see that, that there's an association between these two. And I have a formula which represents that association. 
Well, what about if there, if I didn't have all of these states? Well, what about District of Columbia? What's the poverty rate in the District of Columbia? Okay, I, I'm going to see if I can I undo. Uh, I don't know if I can. I hate to reopen. Does anybody still have that open? Those with poverty rate is? Or maybe you can open it and tell me. 13.4%? 17.4%. So I'm going to go back to my formula here. And this formula is now a predictor of if I know what, the, what my, what my uh, 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 independent variable is, my percentage poverty, I should be able to predict my murder rate. So what should I have expected the murder rate to be in Washington, D.C.? Well, what I would have expected it to be was, uh, was, was going to be equal to 0.432 plus 0.365 times, what was it, 17? 17.4. Okay, what do we wind up with? Should I do it here? I hate waiting for you guys to do it because sometimes sometimes it ain't working on me. Three, six, five, and I stand here for a while and finally give up, until I finally give up. Okay, and I'm going to add, yeah, I got 6.35, so I'm going to add the... Uh, my point uh, four three two. Whoops, I do it. I'm sorry. I'll take your answer. Okay, I'll call it six point eight. So the poverty rate that I would have predicted would have been uh, six point eight, right? Uh, you guys agree with that? Okay. Um, um, the poverty rate that I, I um, the murder rate. I'm sorry, the murder rate that I would have predicted. Would have been six point six point eight. Now, of course, that's per ten thousand or hundred thousand or whatever that that unit is. We don't know that from the way the data is prepared. But that's my that's what I predict as my uh, as my murder rate. In fact, I can go into SPSS, and you may have noticed that gee, you know that line that we just drew when we drew the scatter plot. It's nice that we have that line, but unfortunately, a lot of those points don't fall perfectly on that line, do they? Right? A lot of them miss that line. So, in fact, I'm, I'm going to draw that line right now. Okay, and... Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I could probably... I could look that up for you. Oh, no kidding. That, yeah, that certainly would be interesting. Because now we have something that would have predicted based on the poverty rate what we would expect it. if there's some other factor like that. That might be interesting. Another thing you might look look at is the uh, available, you know, like the number of guns per capita, you know, and the murder rate. That's obviously that's a hot, that would be a hot issue if you could demonstrate there's an association, right, which might be difficult to do. Okay, so at any rate, so you'll notice a lot of these don't lie on that line. Most of them, in fact, don't lie on that line. Most of them are different than what that line would have predicted. However, the line is that line, that formula gives us at least a starting point for what we uh, might think that uh, uh, we might wind up with. Notice that it also gives us a, 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 the formula for the line as well, as well as when we plot the graph, it also gives us the R square value. It's a little off the screen there. There it is, 1.182. Okay, again, 18.2%. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to. I'm going to go back to my data data screen. Okay, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say, uh, um, um, uh, uh, let's see, analyze um, uh, uh, regression linear. I'm going to go into these object uh, options that we have here, and one of the options I'm going to take a look at is under save. I'm going to click on save. And among other things, one of the things that I can ask it to calculate for me is the residuals. I'm going to click on residuals. Okay, and I can also ask it to predict to calculate the predicted values. I'm going to click both of those. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the bottom if I could get down there. As I expand my screen, I'm going to click save. So or okay. I'm going to click okay. Now it's going to repeat the calculations that we did before. But it's also going to make a significant change in the data that we have. Okay. 
So, so if I go down here now, here's the my residual statistics that came up with some uh, uh, it, it calculated residuals, came up with a bunch of statistics. But even before we look at that, if I go to my data file, data uh, 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 view, you may notice that I have two new columns here. Okay, so what it's done is it's actually calculated the predicted value for each one of these different states. So in other words, for this first state, the value, the real value was 7.4. 7 the predicted value uh, uh, would have been 5.7. The real value is 4.3. The predicted value would have been 3.5, and so on and so forth. It's so actually calculated each one of the predicted values based on that formula. Then the second column, what it did was it calculated the residual values, the difference between what it predicted and what uh, the actual values were. Okay? And in fact, if you look at the data here, some of the residual values are positive. It, it underestimated the, it overestimated the actual number of murders, and some of them are negative. It underestimated it in some cases. Some cases uh, by a lot, some cases by not so much. Now, what are we looking for with these residuals concerned? We want those residuals to be basically kind of random, right? We don't want to see a pattern there that, you know, for the low poverty states, the residuals are, you know, like it's a bad predictor. For the high poverty states, it's a good predictor. So that's one of the things that we're going to be looking for in terms of whether or not uh, 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 this, uh, this data is compromised in some way or confounded in some way. Okay, so I want to get to multiple regression also. But uh, so that so we can actually not only can we look at the data in that form, but we can also go up here to analyze uh, uh, my normal case, linear regression. And I, I can ask it to give me these outputs in terms of values that are standardized. Okay? In other words, if I click predicted values standardized, what I'm asking it to tell me is compared to all the other values. How many, how, how, how many Z, if I took all of the predicted values and the differences, for instance, the residuals, how many, and I looked at it as a normal distribution, how many standard deviations away from uh, uh, the actual values are each one of these different values? And I would hope to see that those standardized values for each of those residual values is normally distributed. It's very few of them that are very far away from the actual value, but more and more of them that are close to the actual value. But it's normally distributed closer to the center than to the edges, and we can actually plot those as well. I'm not going to worry about that for now, just so we can get into doing another, taking a little look at this. Well, now, let's take a look at this from the perspective of multiple regression. We want to take a look at what are the other variables that might impact this as well. So I'm going to go to Analyze. I'm going to go to regression. I'm going to go to linear regression. And now, notice I can add in some more independent variables, right? So let's take a look at some of the other. What are the other things that you might think would impact on the murder rate in, in these states? Unemployment. Okay, let's put unemployment in there. What else? Give me one more. What's that? Uh, violent, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's a little too hot. That's a little too close for me, I think, right? right? It's almost the same variable, right, I would think. How about uh, um, uh, violent crime, da, 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 high school percentage of, uh, now, percentage of high school gradu graduation rate from high school, I would think would probably be negative, maybe negative for any amount of college. I'm not going to go to those yet. How about single parent household? Let's add that in. Okay. Okay. And let's give this a try. Let's say, okay, and see what we wind up with. Anybody remember what our R square value was before it was 18.1, right? 0.181, right? In other words, uh, as far as that one variable was concerned, right? Uh, we could explain 18 point, 18% uh, of the variability in the murder rate based on that one variable. Okay, well, let's take a look at what happened when we added in these other variables. When we added in these other variables, how predictable is it now? Yeah, well, now we can predict 
Now, by adding in, by combining these other variables, I can, uh, uh, including these other variables in this analysis, or as causal variables, I've pushed that up to the point where I have, I can predict 50% of the variability in the murder rate based on the three causal variables that I picked out, right? So that's a lot more, a lot, much better predictor of the murder rate in each of these states than just looking at the poverty rate was. Okay, and if I go down here, I can actually look at uh, how each one of these uh, impacted that as well. Now, in this case, the way that these, these formulas actually are represented, notice not all of them are significant, by the way, but I'm gonna ignore that for the moment, okay? The, uh, now, if we look at these, these uh, uh, coefficients, the, the constant or our y-intercept is negative 0.861, but now we have a formula which is going to look something like this. Okay, let me get a first page. Now our formula is going to look something like this. Okay, so our murder rate is going to be equal to negative 8.68, right? Plus, uh, let's see, there's a slope here. 0 0.094 times the poverty rate plus 0.215 times the unemployment rate plus 0.495 times the... Now, what is single parent? Is that like just a yes or a no? That's like a categorical variable, right? Right? So... So if we look at this, we are seeing what the relative effect of each one of these is. So like in other words, for, for an increase of 1% in the poverty rate, right? Uh, if the poverty rate goes up 1%, that accounts for a tenth of a murder in the uh, murder rate, right? And, uh, if we, uh, for each increase of 1% in the poverty rate, it's 0.1 increase in the murder rate. Okay, so that slope is important to us. For each 1% increase in the unemployment rate, there's a bigger effect. It has a bigger effect on the murder rate than the 1% increase in the poverty rate. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Right? That we can see that 1% increase in the unemployment rate had a bigger impact than 1% uh, increase in the poverty rate in terms of the murder rate. Okay? So this slope tells us a lot. It tells us how much of an impact that variable has on our dependent variable. In this case, it happened to be the murder rate. Why is that important? Because maybe um, um, if you know that this has that reducing unemployment will have a bigger impact on the murder rate, you might want to put your resources into reducing unemployment. So there's reasons why you might want to know this, reasons why you might want to quantify it this way. Okay. So, so uh, 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 again, now I can go back and I can create, you know, calculate my residuals and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, these weren't all like these findings weren't all significant. But how many of you guys are any of you guys working with numerical variables in your uh, project? I know a lot of the data is categorical variables, right? Okay. I think next week when we start talking about logistic regression, we're going to get into something that you can actually apply to your data as categorical variables, like, you know, single parent, yes or no, or, or, uh, uh, you know, or whatever, a number of other categorical variables. Eat a lot of fruit, don't eat a lot of fruit, drink too much sugar, okay? don't eat too much sugar, and so on and so forth. So I think this might be a good spot to, you know, call it a night. But, I mean, this is the kind of tool that this is. By the way, are you interested in knowing why they call it regression? Okay. The guy who invented this technique or, or, or applied this, first applied this technique, he was studying the, he was studying the height of parents of children, uh, parents of children and the offspring's heights. And what he was, uh, what he was correlating, he was actually taking the heights of a male parent and the female parent. And he was adjusting the female female height. He was adjusting by eight percent, so that it would like you know kind of if this were if this were if this one were a man, this is what height she would be. 
And he would take the average of those two figures. So in other words, the average of the mother, the average of the mother's height, the average of the father's height. And he would plot that on a graph. And he would say, well, what's the average? What, what was the height of the offspring that they had? So he has the average height of the parents is, is X. And the height of the infant is Y, right? So he would plot a dot for each one of them. So uh, you would think as you got taller parents, you would get taller offspring, right? And indeed you did. But what he discovered when he plotted this was, is that the, the, uh, when you had two short parents, the child was usually taller than you would expect. And when you had tall parents, the offspring was usually a little bit shorter than you would expect. So what would happen is, is that is, is that he discovered that when you had this kind of data, that that as you paired tall, very tall, taller and taller and shorter and shorter parents, that the offspring would regress towards the average, would tend towards the average rather than being taller than the offspring. So he called this technique regression. Has nothing to do with the math. <laughs> Only has to do with his application of it and what he discovered in relation to the height. So correlation has a meaning in English that's the same as in statistics. Regression just has the accident of being part of this initial you know, thing that he was trying to demonstrate. Okay, cool, right? Interesting. Okay, so again, the, the test you use is driven by your data. If you have numerical data, you want numerical variable, numerical variable, you're gonna use regression or correlation, correlation and regression. If you have categorical and categorical, you're gonna use chi-square, odds ratio, relative risk, that kind of stuff. If you have numerical data and categorical variable, male, female, uh, blood pressures, right? You're gonna use, you're gonna find the means, compare the means of the two groups, the categorical groups. You're gonna use a T-score and so on and so forth. You have multiple groups like ethnicities and the average blood pressure within the ethnicities, the numerical variable within the ethnicity, since there's more than two groups, instead of t-test, you'd use analysis of variance. So the real key here is, is that think about what your data is and let your data drive your choice uh, and application of the, uh, uh, the type of test you want to use. Okie doke.